Hello, Buzzacals! My name is Hatsasi and welcome back to another day in Minecraft without mining, of course. Uh, and behind me, you see the contraption we had uh, designed two episodes back uh, for our storage system. And together we will work on it a bit more today. Or to be uh, precise, we will work out on this part here where we want to get the signal out. If you remember, this is basically if we get a signal from the lower hopper line, which indicates we need a more input and we have to send out that signal to whatever form that input can deliver. And the uh, conundrum we have here is that this lamp will lit up if we uh, push out the block. It will also light up if we push the block back. It will not light up if there is no block and the piston just fires. And we basically only want to have one signal when the block comes in. Luckily that's not a too hard problem. I have created a mock-up of the same thing here. And all we have to do is take that signal, put it into a block take it out of a block and then we have the output signal but this block is moved around so the first time it's moved up and then the second time if there is no block no signal goes through and this works like so lamp turns on on the first time and on the second time nothing happens but the block is retracted and of course if the piston just fires no signal as well and with that we basically get the right number of signals out of such a slice and um, we can then go ahead and encode the basically the number of the slice into a redstone signal, send that around our base and hopefully someone or some station will feel responsible to deal with the signal and send us uh, the goodies that we requested. But I think we'll jump over to the, to the actual world uh, to see how this should come together. Here in the back we can see the seven outputs that we have set up for our uh, storage system in there. And if you think about the probably the easiest way would be uh, uh, to just power a redstone line and depending on uh, where we uh, get the signal we would get a different signal strengths but the thing is uh, transmitting information through signal strengths is a bit difficult because you have to retain that signal strengths so instead what we will do is take the signal uh, out of the slice and convert that into signal lengths. And Cass from uh, Mysoma Games has a really nice encoder for that and then we can send that signal around our base um, to whatever form uh, will receive it. In here you can see what items we have set up and I have noted that down in the book and 
basically those are in the same order as we have them along here. Uh, so cobblestone of course is in the second slice and it's from there it's just easy that cobblestone will get signal length 2, birch will get signal length 10 which leaves a few spots open and one spot that is already taken up here is for the bone mill because over there at our bone mill factory we will have also a setup to encode the signal for uh, bone mill so we can request bone mill from said factory and through our world we have various farm that require bone meal. So all those uh, locations will also get an encoder. And then we only have to figure out how to decode the system or the signal and figure out uh, do we need to uh, send the, the signal further on because the way we tried to decode it, we are not responsible for that type of signal. Because, for example, if we send the request for iron uh, to the bone meal form, bone meal form will not feel responsible uh, for doing anything with that signal. This is the encoder setup. Um, I defined it here for all 15 uh, signal lengths uh, so we can just copy it in and just remove the slices or not build the slices that we do not need. And the way this works is basically we have one item in here and the output takes the, the signal strength from this hopper. So we detect if anything is in that hopper, uh, we get the output signal. And the longer it stays in that hopper, the longer the signal will be. And this is basically determined by these two lines here. So whenever we get an input signal, this line turns on. Uh, moving the item over to that dropper, basically powering uh, or signaling the start of the signal. And because of that, we have uh, somewhere along here, we're powering the, uh, the comparators from the side, overriding the signal they get in here from this cake and that then basically determines the time that uh, goes past until this redstone torch is powered because all the uh, comparators are unpowered and the item is moved back determining the end of the signal. And you can see that if we press here, we get a short signal. If we press here, we get a long signal. And maybe uh, to see how this works, we can place a button here. And uh, we press that one. You can see the comparators from there forward they depower the ones to the right do not and that's basically uh, how we can encode a signal and we just have to hook up the right uh, slices here and there and the next thing is to basically build the decoder of this signal strength so that we can uh, uh, decide um, 
what to do with the signal. And this is the decoder, which uh, works as far as I can tell by uh, uh, delayed signals, because uh, here uh, through this line, we will have two signals traveling. The first is coming in when the line is powered. And then we have a bit of a contraption here where we lock this repeater for the duration of the signal length. And after that, we basically power this line and that creates the second signal uh, going through down there. And with that, we get uh, flickering torches up here and only one torch is unlit long enough for the repeater to be detected by this observer then uh, and one lamp will lit up and uh, incidentally that's just the right lamp for the signal length. So let's try this with the first one should light up the first lamp right there. And there it is. And if we go a bit further back, like here, we should have a lamp in the middle. Yes, nice. So all this works out quite well. And uh, ideally we would I mean, here we can then also say, okay, if the station where we decoded is not interested in, uh, the, in the second signal, we can just do that. And even if we get a signal uh, of length two, we will not decode it here. And the thing here is, um, it would be nice to have a system that could detect cases. Uh, yeah, we decoded the signal here and not propagate it further. However, I think that's a bit overkill for our use case because we only have one dedicated station uh, that deals with the signal. So we don't have multiple stations uh, that, for example, would supply cobblestone. We only hook up the most efficient farm for cobblestone um, to supply it. And uh, that should work. Here on this side, we will have probably multiple stations that can trigger the signal. For example, for cobblestone, we have it that can come from the storage system, but it can also come from the smelter if the smelter needs more cobblestone to smelt more stone. So yeah, I think that will work out quite nicely. And with that figured out, we can jump back into the main world and uh, place a few of these contraptions uh, there, of course, uh, adjusted to the local needs. Here at our sorter, we have the one encoder that deals with the most signals as everything that we store here is encoded here. There are only two signals that we don't have here. Uh, it's this one, which is uh, again a cobbled co a cobblestone, but intended for the smelter. And then I think here this slice is for bone meal, which we decode over there, but which actually means we do have a decoder 
there uh, an encoder there under the tree farm for bone mill uh, and then down there we have another decoder for birch and spruce we also have something uh, under the cobble farm under the uh, iron farm and uh, the other interesting thing here is uh, under our smelter where we have a decoder for uh, stone and uh, smooth stone there uh, even labeled uh, and we do have an encoder for exactly a uh, cobblestone uh, to be smelted up into stone so that's a lot of uh, uh, pieces put into place but uh, it's it's all not yet connected uh, we could connect the, the the redstone wire but first i think i want to figure out how to transport the items because there are still a few challenges to be mastered but not today that's for another day so hope you also joined in and i will see you goodbye